You know, you go day after day and do those things which God brings your way and you share and you talk and you care and you take care of your necessities and realities of whatever it is that's in your life today. And sometimes you get to a place where you say, you know, I don't know if I want to do this, you know. But you do it anyways, you know, and then you're blessed and you go, oh, well, that was easy. That was cool, you know, and then you look back, you know, and you realize how easy it really is to just do it, to just go forward. If you blow it, you blew it. If you didn't, you don't. If you do, you will. If you have it, you will eventually. So in some way, in some case, don't get so perfect that you think that you're always moving on a steady stream uphill because you're probably not ready for what God has in store for you. So he's keeping you safe and protected until the time that you're going to hit a reality check where he's going to take you into deeper waters where you have to learn to swim. Because if you don't, <laughs> this world will drown you. So... Spurgeon, as God inspired him, always gives us ability to turn our attention and the focus of our spirit back to God and to listen to what he would say so that we would know in our mind, in our heart, and in our emotions how to arrange our lives so we don't find ourselves... <laughs> up a creek without a paddle <laughs> or out in the ocean without a life raft or a life preserver I don't think so I think what we need to do is always trust in the Lord and until you learn how to walk on water I wouldn't be heading around any ocean at all <laughs> looking unto Jesus well that figures <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> that about said it all. Let's close the book. Uh, it is ever the Holy Spirit's work to turn our eyes away from self to Jesus. But Satan's work is just the opposite of this. For he is constantly trying to make us regard ourselves instead of Christ. He insinuates, your sins are too great. For pardon, you have no faith. You did not repent enough. You aren't a true Christian. You weren't truly converted. You didn't do an altar call. You weren't baptized right. You weren't baptized. <laughs> you have not the joy of his children. You don't have the Holy Spirit. You didn't speak in tongues. You didn't confess. You didn't say this. You didn't do that. <laughs> oh, what a reality check when people try to say what true is. Oh, boy. And it all comes from one source. Satan lying. And then people just repeating the lie. All these are thoughts about self, and we shall never find comfort or assurance by looking within. But the Holy Spirit turns our eyes entirely away from self. He tells us that we are nothing, but that Christ is all in all. Remember... Therefore, it is not thy hold of Christ that saves you, it is Christ. It isn't Jesus that's, or it isn't your hold of Jesus that saves you, but it is Jesus. It is not your joy in Jesus that saves you, but it is Jesus. It is not even the faith in Christ that saves you, but it is God who saves you. <laughs> uh, it is Christ's blood and his merits of what he did and accomplished on the cross that is your salvation. Therefore, look not so much to your hand with which you are grasping Christ as to Jesus himself. Look not to your hope, but to Jesus. Don't look at yourself and what you think you need, but look to the source, look to God himself. Jesus is the source of your hope. Look not to thy faith, and but to Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. He started it, he will complete it unto the day of salvation. We shall never find happiness by looking at our prayers, or our doings, or our feelings, or our accomplishments, or our giftings, or our gift. It is what Jesus is 
not what we are that gives rest to the soul. If we would at once overcome Satan and have peace with God, it's not by going out with the sword of the Spirit and putting on the full armor of God, but it is looking unto Jesus. Hmm. Keep your eye simply on Him. Let His death, His sufferings, His merits, His accomplishments, His glory, His intercession be fresh upon your mind. And when you wake in the morning, look directly to Him before you get out of bed. When thou liest down at night, look to Him. Thank Him for your day. Oh, let not thy hopes or fears come between you and Jesus or any other thing. Follow hard after God, and He will never fail you. Boy, you know, you just got to know that Spurgeon was... Yeah! <laughs> and he says the same things that we say today. Oh, there may be people that say, Oh, you can do this, and you can do that, and you can, you can, you can, you can, you can. You know what you can, you can? <laughs> you can look to Jesus, or you can go, you can your own way. <laughs> but I'm not going to do it my way, because I'd rather not be in the highway with all these people doing their way, you know, with what they want to say, and what they proclaim to say, and what they think they say, and what they do, and do do, and don't do, and get all confused. I'll turn to Jesus every time, and whatsoever God tells me to do, that I want to do. Because I could very much guilt anything of myself and anyone else into doing something that God didn't say to do. That's easy. We all feel guilty at times. But the reality is, what did God, in His Holy Spirit, with the love of God, with the mercy of God, with the joy of the Holy Spirit, with the love of humanity with God so loving the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. What did God say to you today? And if you don't know, find out. Because <laughs> otherwise, you're going to go the wrong way. And I can say that for a fact. Because every day I run into people that are bummed out, burned out, blown out, and just busting down doors and knocking down kingdoms and thinking that they're conquering in the name of God. And the reality is they're the most depressing, miserable people I've ever met in my life. <laughs> and they're more holy than I am and more righteous, believe me. And they're more gifted and they're more this and they're more that and whatever. But you know something? There's only one thing I know. And it's the only thing that I hold on to and it's the only thing I want. Just give me Jesus every day. And that's all I want. Jesus and my coffee. And him and I, we're all right. <laughs>